everybody and welcome to The Garden TV on Easter Sunday. We're so glad to be with you today. My name's Brianna and this is my husband, Stephen, and we're so excited to be joining you from inside your living room. We have an amazing service planned for you, so I hope you have your notebook, your pen, and if you have a goodie bag, keep it close. Hey, if it's your first time here today, can we just say thank you so much for being with us today? If you need anything at all, we have links in the uh, comment section above, we have links below. Hit us in the comment section. We have people that are ready and willing to make sure you got whatever you need. Once again, thank you so much for being with us. We have some music coming up next. Once again, happy Easter and enjoy the service. lost with a broken heart you pick me up now i'm set apart from the ash i am born again forever safe in our savior's hands and you are more than my words can say i follow you love for all my days i fix my eyes follow in your ways forever free in an end for the team one more time. They are doing such an amazing job and we get to celebrate today the fact that our King is alive. Hey, we're gonna continue our worship with our giving and there's many ways that you can participate in this opportunity with us. Head to thegardentricities.com. You can click the give button there. You can text to give. Text the word garden to 77977. You can even mail your gift in 
whatever you like. Hey, I wanna remind us today that when we're giving, that we're not giving to get anything or to earn something or to move ourselves ahead in life. No, no, we get to give uh, because we have a savior named Jesus Christ who gave everything. And because he gave everything, we're able to have peace. And because he gave everything, we're able to have joy. Because he gave everything, we are able to have more life than death. So today when you're giving, remember, you're not giving to get victory. No, 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 you are giving from a place of victory. That because of Jesus Christ on the inside of us and what he has done, we get to have the blessing of the Lord on our life. I hope you receive that today. The blessing of the Lord is upon your life. Let's just pray over this time and let's just give this offering to God and let him do what only he can do. God, we thank you for who you are and what you are doing right now. God, we thank you for the gift that you gave to us. And God, we thank you that that gift named Jesus Christ has victory over every single thing. And because of the victory that Jesus gave, we have that victory too. God, I thank you that the blessing is on these people's lives. God, I thank you that this time of giving is blessed. God, that you're gonna do exceedingly abundantly above what we could ever ask, think, or imagine. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and your generosity. We love you. Hey, we're gonna transition into one of my favorite times, which is online virtual section connection. It's gonna be a blast. Here's what I want you to do, get ready. But you might not know this, over the last few weekends, we've had story after story come in of people that have joined us online who would have never joined us in our actual physical location. But because somebody invited them, they said, sure, why not, I'll hop on. So here's what I want us to do. Right now, wherever you're at, watching on your phone or a laptop or an iPad, right here below, there's a little button that says share. I would love if you would, right now, we're gonna section connection, we're gonna connect with people. You have somebody in your mind that you know, hey, they should be here with us right now. It's Easter Sunday, they should be in church. We should all be in church on Easter Sunday. So right here, click that little share button right now, wherever you're at, and tag them, invite them. Invite somebody to come and watch with you. Go right now. Who knows, the person that you invite, they might actually show up and God might meet them face to face today. Come on, go right now, wherever you're at, go and share it, go and like it, invite somebody, text them, hey, come check this out. Right now, you got a couple more seconds. Go share, go share, it's gonna be good. Let them know, let them know. Okay, you guys are amazing. You guys are amazing, let's go, bring it back in. Bring it back in, come on, come on back, here we go. Hey, we're gonna keep, continue our, our service and the team has put together an amazing song and, and this song is called The Blessing. Uh, and, and here's what I want you to do. I just want you to position yourself to receive this morning. God has something incredible for each and every one of us and I think that this song is really gonna position us to receive what he has for us. So, so just whatever you gotta do, put the distractions away and just really enter and listen to the words of this song and let's declare this over our lives. The blessing of the Lord is on our life. Let's continue with our service.
Happy Easter, everybody. Man, we're happy to be with you. Isn't it cool to have everybody in the house for Easter? Awesome, yes. Everybody's at our place. It's awesome. Hope you got your bag uh, delivered to you and you got it handy. We're going to be tapping into that thing here a little bit. And, and the things that are in there, uh, should we just should we go through it a little bit? You know, because you might want to break into some of these uh, during the message. Um, <laughs> I might. Uh, and you got your communion stuff, uh, very important uh, to understand these will not be used for the body today. These are this is just for you. Uh, the, you got special things. Get your communion cups out. Uh, there's stuff, and, and, and I got to tell you right off the bat, it's my fault. Uh, uh, we had this thought that wouldn't it be cool if we could put toilet paper in every bag and Skip Novakovich and I think he could only buy two or three rolls at a time and he asked me how many I wanted I said 500 and he made a bunch of trips I you know he got all the toilet paper we got it delivered to the church um, I forgot to tell the guys to put it in there so that might be coming later in the day or something I don't know we got if you run out of toilet paper would you call uh, we should have, why don't you guys put Steven's cell number on the screen <laughs> right now and we'll do something like that hey we're excited that you're with us easter and uh would you just say this with me say the blessing of the lord the blessing of the lord is on my life is on my life say the blessing of the lord the blessing of the lord is on my life is on my life let's say it together babe 
the blessing of the, the Lord, Lord is, is on my, my life. life. So funny because she doesn't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I can tell she's nervous right now. Hey, um, you know what? We're going to get in the Word today, but I just, I just want to tell you something. This Easter, uh, you know, and it's like, oh, darn it. You know, we can't be together. Uh, we, we don't get to gather in, in huge assemblies. This is the Super Bowl Sunday for churches. And I've been on so many calls and Zoom meetings with pastors all over the place. And, uh, 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 and you know, honestly, we, we would much rather be together. Um, but this is a, probably a lot closer to, to the original Easter. And, uh, you know, people just gathered in small groups and, and a, lot of, a lot of questions going on, which is pretty close to how the way the first one went. Uh, but today, what's exciting to me is that I know that there's people with us online because it's just it's been happening. It's coming up in the testimonies you're hearing. Uh, but there's people with us that even if we were getting together, you wouldn't be with us. And it's like how God reaches into circumstances and situations. And, and it's like part of his makeup. He can't help it. He just finds stuff that's jacked up and dysfunctional. And, and, he, and he injects life and blessing into it and, and uses what the enemy was hoping to use for evil. God turns it, uses it for good. So I know that there's people with us right now that you wouldn't normally be with us. And, and this whole thing, uh, you know, I don't want to make you feel bad, but this whole thing probably is your fault because now we got you in a place where God gets to speak to you and we're glad you're here today. Don't turn don't, don't, don't turn us off. Stay through this whole thing because God's reaching out to you today, especially to those of you who wouldn't even have considered coming to the church, but now you're, you're with us, uh, not the church building, but the church body. Right. We're glad you're here. And, and I just want to go over some stuff and just, uh, and just get into this thing and ask you this question. Have you been watching your manners? You know, you got to remember what manner of people we are. Remember, they, they marveled at Jesus. They said, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? And Jesus was simply demonstrating the manner of people that we are to be after the power of God comes upon us and, and the Holy Spirit's on the inside and the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickens us. What manner of man are you? Remember Matthew 12, 35, that it says that a good man brings forth good things. And, and it doesn't say that God does. It says that, that man, God has positioned man. When God blessed man, he positioned him to win and succeed regardless of the situation. Man, you really want to frustrate hell, demonstrate Satan's defeat, you know, uh, and, and do it right now in the middle of a pandemic. Be the good man and know what manner of man you are that just continues to bring forth good things. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, hey, I'm sitting in front of you, death, life, blessing, cursing, but you make a decision. You, you decide. See, when you make a decision, it's not just picking one thing, but it's cutting out. It's all those other things. Same word for incision is where we get the word decision. And, and, and we're cutting out the evil. We're cutting out the curse. Man, we don't participate in the curse. We, we choose the blessing. And, and he said, you know, I'm putting blessing in front of you, life in front of you. Uh, make that choice. And Proverbs 18:21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. Where's your power? You've been, you've been put in the power position. Where's your power at? In my mouth. The power is in your mouth. You got to speak life. You got to speak hope. You say what God says, and then, and, and then it, it produces life, even in the midst of chaos. And, uh, you know, Ephesians 3.20 says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we could ask, hope, think, even beyond our ability to imagine. God's ability is not at question. But the ability of God hinges on what? The power that's working in us. That's right. And what's the power that's working in us? His word. It's His word in our mouth. Right. The power is in the tongue. And so, you, you know, what manner of man are you? You're, you're, you're speaking a lot. You're not using your words to describe things. You're using your words to change things. And, and James put it this way in James 1, go read it 21 through 25. It says, be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. And, and down about, I don't, I think it's 23 or 24. It says, don't be the guy that looks into the perfect law of liberty and then goes away and forgets what manner of man he is, right? But be a doer 
of the word, not a hearer only, be, be a doer of the work. And, and uh, you know, we, we get to use eloquent expression. God provided that. That's his words. And we take uh, his words and through eloquent expression, we bring forth life, right? We bring forth life. That's what Easter is the celebration of is the resurrection life. Even after death has done everything it can, life stands back up again. Life stands back up again. Is that awesome? And that because of Easter, we have that life in us. We have that power, but we got we to gotta express it, right? Uh, this, this is how your faith becomes effective, by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in you in Christ. And it's in you so you can bring it forth, right? You're going to bring it forth. Is You're resurrecting it. Resurrection power. Can I just say this to you today? Resurrection power is alive and well in you. And, and, and God's given it to you. Now, I, I, I just want you to know that it all flows from the blessing. The blessing of the Lord is on my life. Everything in God's heart, man, it just makes his heart beat is to put the blessing upon the lives of his people. And it started in Genesis in the first chapter. God blessed them and said, God put the blessing on them. When, when the flood came and covered the earth and he speaks to the guys before they leave the boat, he said, it, he, he gave them the same commandment, go forth and, and multiply and replenish. And he put the blessing on them. Uh, everybody in the room, man, I'm telling you, the blessing of God's on your life if you're in Christ because it was on Abraham. And, and, and listen to this, Isaiah 51 verse 1. One and two, uh, uh, and he said, "Man, listen to me, all who hope for deliverance." I'm reading it from the New Living. I think it is. Uh, uh, listen to me, all who hope for deliverance. It, and, and deliverance isn't to be plucked out of a situation, but it's it's to be equipped to fight and win in any situation. And he said, "Man, if your hope is in deliverance, which is a, a part of the package of the blessing, okay, it's the blessing package. We sent you a package, it's got peeps in it. God sent you a package, it's got deliverance power in it." And he said, "Everybody who's seeking the Lord, he said, uh, re remember from the rock that you were cut and the quarry from which you were mined. God came after you like you're a precious." gemstone, a diamond, and, and, and he mined you out of the quarry. And he said, think about Abraham and Sarah who gave birth to you. And listen to this. This is my favorite part of this. He said, Abraham was only one man when I called him. He was only one man when I called him, but when I blessed him. But man, here comes the exchange, right? Jesus didn't come to change your life. He came so you could exchange your life. You could take off the old, you could put on the new. You could step out of death and, and, and exchange it for life. He said, uh, when, when I called him, he was one, but when I blessed him, he became a great nation. When I blessed him, he became great. When God blessed you, you elevated, you exchanged from weak and powerless to, to great and filled with power. And uh, think about this, Galatians 3.29. Uh, read that. You got it? Yes. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Oh, my gosh. You belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. And the blessing that God gave to Abraham now belongs to you. The blessing belongs to you. You got to own it. See, here's the deal is that without ownership, there's no outrage. It, like, it, like, you know, you're sitting outside and you're watching somebody fiddle around a bunch of cars parked on the street. You might be slightly concerned unless it's your car. Mm -hmm. And if it's your car, that concern shifts, right? You exchange slight concern for total engagement. Somebody comes to take your stuff, you rise up. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to go, that's my stuff. Get your hands off my stuff. See, and that's what God expects us to do. He expects us to see ourselves as owners and, and, and to, to, to take the authority of an owner and begin to demand that enemy get his hands off of our stuff. See, Jesus, uh, a relationship with Jesus doesn't just equip you for eternity, but it, it equips you for uh, real life right here, right now. Uh, eternal life doesn't start when you die. 
It starts when you're born again and you get more life than death. You got to own that. I own more life than death. I own more joy than sorrow. I own more peace than chaos. It's not the absence of chaos. It's just the peace that I own has the ability to swallow any chaos that the world system stirs up, the evil stirs up, you know, and you got to own it. And, and man, what, what would be awesome is if we could just own this thing, you know, just knowing that if any man be in Christ, he's new, right? Second Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he's new. The old has been exchanged for the new, right? right? So let the new life begin and exchange the old stuff, get the new stuff and, and, and believe God that this life is actually abundant to the top, to overflows. You got overflow in life. Maybe the key to increase on Easter today, maybe the key to increase is not your pursuit of more. See, we're believing God for increase. We're praying for you all the time and, and we're speaking increase over your life. We're believing God for a 20% increase. Yeah, but look at what's going on. Look at the chaos. Look at the pandemic. You know, uh, we, one story, the stories are great that keep coming in. Th and thank you for sharing stories. You got good stories. Continue to share them with us. Um, and, and thank you for being with us again today. You know, it, stuff's lighting up and everybody's here. It's awesome. But uh, one of the stories we've heard this week of a young man that uh, got laid off. And of course, when, you know, when he got laid off, here come the questions, which is how the devil works. He tries to bring in a question. It's not to get an answer. It's to sow the seed of doubt and unbelief and, and a second thought. And, and here come the questions. And by the way, that's how the enemy has always worked. He, he didn't ask Eve, what did God really say? Because he wanted to know what God said. He asked Eve, what did God say to plant the seed of doubt? And here come the questions and, and the, you know, how are we going to pay the bills? How are we going to make it? How, how are we going to survive? I got laid off. And then he finds out that because of unemployment and all the advantages that they're given through that, now he's making $800 a week. He's making more now than he was when he was working. Yeah. And it's like, man, got a 20% increase and don't even have to leave the house. God is good. Maybe the key to increase in your life is not the pursuit of more but the willingness to embrace less. And, and, and you know, it, I'm going to try to break it down and explain it real quick, but, but maybe instead of pursuing more, you, you actually embrace less. I, I think today when you say the blessing of the Lord is on my life, I, you know, God wants me to be blessed, be blessed, be dash blessed. Okay, because see, I don't think you need more. I think you need less. I think you need less doubt. I think you need less unbelief. I think you need less carnal thought. You, you need less poverty mentality. You need less of the victim's mindset. You need less sideshow distraction. You need less fear and intimidation. I think you need, you, you, <laughs> it's a tongue twister. I think you need less messes. Okay, less Nesses, uh, brokenness, bitterness, unforgiveness, selfishness, hopelessness. You need less. And so you can exchange because, you know, uh, your life for the God life and, and, and be in Christ and, and have less of the chaos and let the peace of God come and guard your heart and mind. Let the life of God swallow up the death. And, and just know that uh, because you've exchanged your life for God life, now you are, uh, you belong to Christ and you're a joint heir with Jesus. You, you, your identity is in him. So it's identical to him. Uh, you have supernatural ability on the inside of you that God's going to bring forth. He's going to use you to bring forth amazing things. The devil knows your potential. The problem is maybe you don't. Uh, and just, just embrace this truth and this reality that because of Jesus and the price that he paid and he went to the cross and he bled and he suffered and he died so that I could live and, 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 and quit thinking about where you came from. You know, like, like, like your history is going to overshadow your possibility. It's not possible. Jesus's history, his family line, check this out. If you go to Matthew chapter one, sometime, read the first 16 verses, you got to be pretty tough to make it through there. You know, Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob. It, just, it goes on and on and on. But you ought to sit down and study it out. It's really cool. There's three sections, three sections of 14 
generations each. 14 times 3 is 42. Go up later and count them. There's only 41 generations listed. Well, does God not know how to add? No, you're the 42nd generation. You're a royal priesthood, a chosen nation, a peculiar people, you know, the chosen generation. This is you. And, and, but, but listen to Jesus' uh, family tree for a minute. Abraham said that his wife was his sister twice, only so he didn't have to fight to protect her. So Abraham, you got the coward, the liar. He got Isaac, he did the same thing, but he got caught snuggling up with her. Jacob lied to his father, cheated his brother, ripped off his father-in-law. Rahab, she was a harlot. She was a prostitute. Ruth lived on the wrong side of the tracks. Her nation was despised. Uh, Solomon allowed his wives, and he had a bunch of them, uh, to worship false gods. Rehoboam split the nation of Israel in two. There's a bunch of kings in the genealogy of Jesus. They weren't all great guys. They were... Uh, worship false gods. Some of them were tyrants. They did a lot of cruel things. Uh, Manasseh sacrificed his own son to an idol. Stupid idiot. Uh, you, got, you, you got two noticeable people in there. You got uh, uh, Judah and Tamar, and you just need to go read Genesis 38 and figure that one out for yourself. There's nothing but dysfunction. You got King David. Everybody knows about him. What's the point? God wasn't working through a storybook. He was working in the nitty gritty, fallen, ugly, and only sometimes faithful lives of people like you and me. Uh, redeemable, but full of flaws. The one common characteristic among everyone in the lineage of Jesus was their incredible propensity to be downright human and downright sinful. Some of you might be thinking, and you read the, the, that genealogy, oh, man, I thought my family line was bad. <laughs> Jesus had royal blood in him, it, but he also had the blood of murderers, cheats, liars, prostitutes, pagans, swindlers. Yet he was without sin. How did that happen? Well, he tapped into the power that was put on the inside of him. Same power that's on the inside of you. And, and it was through his bloodline that God's plan was to bring all of us into a new life. And that's where it flowed. See, God can take the most unlikely people in the most messed up situations, turn them upside down and use them for his purpose. God can take a pandemic and, and reach people who won't go to a church building but be impacted through the church. In fact, evidence would actually suggest he prefers this method. Uh, there's no other alternative. While God uses us in our dysfunction, he never celebrates our sin. God's bigger than our failure, though. And, and, and he's not surprised by our failure. And, and here's the thing you got to get is that you can't feel your way out of his reach. You, see, you, you haven't sinned past hope. There's always hope right up to the end. And, and the failure of people finds its root in our self-centeredness in a pursuit of what we want. And God knows the depth of this issue. Sin destroys our soul and keeps us from God. But God doesn't want to leave us there. Right? And he's not doing it so we feel better about ourselves, but so we can be a part of his plan and, and, and in, in fellowship with him. Without outside intervention, we're doomed to the consequences of our failure and our sin. But the only one who can give us the new life, that, and it's the life that we need, is found not at the beginning or the middle, but at the end of that family tree, and that's Jesus. See, if we find our life in Jesus, we're a part of his family tree. And the thing of it is, is that uh, Easter celebrates resurrection power and that there's more, there's more power in his life than in the death that, that's, that's coming. I, I want you, I want you to uh, real quick, grab your communion uh, emblems and we're going to partake together communion. But before we do it, I just want to ask you, have you found your life in Christ yet? We're going to all pray. We're going to pray a prayer. We're going to pray it out loud. And like I said, I'm kind of aiming at some of you guys that would have never come to the building, but yet here you are and you're with us. We're so glad that you're with us. Man, I'm telling you that God's plan is the blessing. And the blessing of God can be upon your life. And when you hear his voice and obey him, then it says all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. I'm telling you, the blessings of God will hunt you down and catch you. You can't outrun them. But, it, but you have to get yourself in alignment with God first. So maybe, maybe you know, at church, we'd call it maybe the sinner's prayer. Maybe you've never prayed it. Maybe you prayed it a thousand times. That's not the question today. The question is this. Is his life the power that's flowing in you? 
if, if you're not in alignment with the word of God and the will of God, the ways of God, I want, I want you to make this prayer your prayer. Okay, wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, just pray this prayer with us right now. And just repeat this with me. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I know I need you. I know I need you. I need your love. I need your love. I need your acceptance. I need your acceptance. I need your forgiveness. I need your forgiveness. So I receive it. So I receive it. Right here. Right here. Right now. Right now. Come into my life. Come into my life. Change me. Change me. From the inside out. From the inside out. Give me hope. Give me hope. Give me strength. Give me strength. Give me vision. Give me vision. I choose to live for you. I choose to live for you. From this day forward. From this day forward. I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting. I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you for setting me free. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, can we just give God a hand and thank him? Because I'm just believing that lots of people prayed that prayer. And now we're going to go to the table of remembrance. Okay, wherever you are, you got the emblems. If if you didn't get one of the bags, uh, you know, grab some juice, grab a piece of bread uh, and bring it in. And, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, okay? And, and get the emblems ready because that'll give everybody else time to try to figure out how to open this. You might need to hand it to a, to a child. Like, like, see, I just opened it wrong because I, I got the juice going and, the, and my, my little bread piece is still in there. Um, man, I tell you, I, I might need Annie right about now. But uh, if you get the emblems ready, we're going to partake together of communion. And what we're doing is we're, we're identifying with the death and the resurrection of Jesus today. And, and the fact is, is that when, when he allowed his body to be broken for you, it, 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 it empowered you to have a, a, a wholeness that is only possible through Jesus Christ. And so if you'll take your bread or your emblem, whatever you have, and, and, you know, Shelby and I, when we, when we uh, got married at, our, at, at, at the wedding ceremony, uh, we had communion as part of the ceremony, and they forgot the emblems. And see, I, it's not the emblem that's important, it's the remembrance. And it's like, maybe you don't have anything ready today. Well, you can do what we did at our wedding. And, and you know what, we, we just, here, here's the bread, and, and, and here's the cup, and, and you know, you, it's, don't get hung up on any of that stuff. Get caught up in the resurrection power that's gonna flow into your life today when we partake together of these emblems. Jesus, you know, he said, my body was broken and it was broken for you. And when you, did, when you take this bread, just remember that your wholeness has come through my brokenness. So I just wanna pray, Father, I just thank you today that you allowed Jesus to be broken so that we, your people, could be made whole. That even though, uh, you know, there, there was, uh, a curse on mankind because of disobedience. The blessing came through the obedience of your son, Jesus. We celebrate that broken body, Jesus' name. Let's partake together of the bread. When Jesus had done that, the Bible says he took the cup and he said, this represents the blood of the new covenant. We're in a new covenant with Jesus because of the blood. And I love that old song that says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. We're going to take the blood just like they did in the Passover. And they took the blood and they put it over the doorpost of their house so that the curse couldn't enter in. We're going to apply the blood of Jesus to our life today. And the curse, man, I'm telling you, the virus can't come nigh my property line. And, the, and sickness and disease and poverty and brokenness and defeat, uh, none of it's coming to my house. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. So, Father, I thank you today. That because of the shed blood of Jesus, I'm now part of the bloodline of Jesus. God, we just praise you and we give you glory. And I thank you that today as people partake of communion, health and healing is flowing through their body right now in Jesus' name. We declare it. And Father, we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Partake together the cup. God is good. He is. He's good. I hope, I hope that in this season, you're finding time to grow your relationship with God. I hope today that you understand that the blessing of the Lord is upon you. May his face shine on you. You and your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. God is for you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. So are we. God bless you guys. Happy Easter. Have a great day. We look forward to being together soon. 
And I just want to tell you how thrilled I am that you were with us today. Man, it's Easter. It's hard not to go Pentecostal preacher on you. And maybe, maybe you didn't pray that prayer when we all prayed it just a minute ago. Maybe you did, but maybe you didn't. So I want to pray it one more time. I, I want you to just say this because it's like, hey, God's, God's given a, yet another chance. And just say, Father, I know I need you. I need your love. I need your acceptance. I need your forgiveness. So I receive it right here, right now. Change me from the inside out. Give me hope. Give me strength. Give me peace. I'm going to live for you starting today. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for setting me free. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Now listen, if you pray in this prayer with us, you got to let us know. And we're not going to inundate you with all kinds of emails and stuff, but we're going to start praying for you right away. Okay, because we believe in you. And can I just tell you this, that God's got a plan for your life. And, 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 and it's awesome. And he's gonna, the blessing of the Lord is upon you. And he really is for you. And you and your kids and your kids' kids. And you know, it's like the song said, and all the messages that you're hearing right now. So I just wanna encourage you to let us do that life with you. Let us walk with you. Let us help you. We'll do anything we can. And if you're watching today and, and, and you need groceries or something, call us. I'll send somebody out and have them shop for you. Uh, you know, we'll do whatever we can to help you right now. And, and because why? Because God's for you. And if God be for you, that's where I wanna be. I'm on, the, I'm on his team and I'm on his side. So uh, whatever you guys need, just know that Easter is about resurrection, it's about life. So go out and have and enjoy life. Thanks for being with us today. Come on church, give them a round of applause. Come on, they just made the best decision you could ever possibly make. Give them some thumbs up, give them some love. That's right. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer, can we just tell you, congratulations. The best decision that you could ever possibly make. You did it. You're amazing. And let me tell you something. You just joined an undefeated team. Today we're celebrating the victory that we have with Jesus Christ, and you get to participate in that as well. Hey, below, if you pray that prayer, we got a link. We just posted it. It says connection card. We would love if you would take a second and just fill that out. And here's why. We believe that together we're better and that we were never meant to do life alone. So when you send us that card, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna start praying for you right now, standing with you, believing with you, and then we're gonna make sure you have everything you need to be successful in this journey. We love you, we're so appreciative of you. Church, come on one more time, give them some love. They made the best decision ever. <laughs> If this is your first time here, we just want to say thank you for spending this Sunday with us, Easter Sunday. We are so excited that you joined us. We would love to send you a free gift. So what we need you to do is to fill out that link, the connection card link, and we will make sure that that gift gets to you. Who knows what the gift could be? Maybe toilet paper. Could be, but please click on that link, fill out that card, and we'll get that gift to you. Hey, if you need anything else, anything else. We got links below. You can always visit us on thegardentricities.com. Head to our social media, The Garden Tri Cities, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, whatever we got. We are here for you. Whatever it might be, we got you covered. Once again, thank you so much for spending Easter Sunday with us. We love you guys so much. And from the Garden family to yours, happy Easter. We'll see you next see weekend. See you next weekend. Hey guys, we're so glad you guys came. I had to come on real quick and let you know that we're gonna keep this virtual lobby open for a little while longer. Some of you might have questions, you might be trying to find a link or something. We got moderators, we got people ready to help you out. Stay around, hang out, say hi to people. But we're gonna be here for a few more minutes, so don't feel like you just have to get off right away. We love you guys, keep going.